Marvin, the concept of consciousness is now hot because everybody's using it. Scientists, philosophers, theologians all look to consciousness as the key part to, to enable us to understand what we're all about. You have called consciousness a suitcase word. What do you mean by that? Well, I think the word consciousness is a clever trick that we use to keep from thinking about how thinking works. <laughs> and what we do is we take a lot of different phenomena and we give them all the same name and then you think you've got it. It's just so, so packing a lot <laughs> of separate stuff into a suitcase. Yes, <laughs> because uh, if you look in a dictionary, you'll find things which uh, descriptions saying a person is aware of themselves or something like that. But what does it mean to say you're aware of yourself? And if you think in terms of uh, the brain as a whole bunch of uh, different kinds of machinery with various connections, then it, it's easy to see that it would be very hard for any one part of the brain to know what's happening in all the rest. You just, uh, there's just too much. So in fact, each part of the brain has connections to some other parts of the brain and can get some idea. But there's no place that knows everything. Mm -hmm. uh, just as the manager, or the president of a company, I believe the president of some technology companies are lawyers. Yeah. They haven't the slightest idea <laughs> what the company makes or how it works, but they, uh, they know little things like, uh, we're not making enough money, what should we do? <laughs> anyway, when uh, people use the word consciousness, I think it's a very strange idea that there's some wonderful property of the brain that can do so many different things. Uh, such as to remember what you've been doing recently or uh, remember who you are and, uh, and why you're able to talk about yourself and just so many things like that. We use the word conscious, for uh, example, when you know why you did something. Uh, sometimes you just do something without even remembering that you did it or knowing a reason. And then we get into sort of the world of ethics. We love the idea that some things are done deliberately and some things are done automatically because that, that's convenient for legal and ethical and other operations. So the word conscious is very valuable socially. It's all right to punish someone if they know what they did and perhaps why because, because what? because they might be able to learn. If they have a representation of what caused that, then they might be able to change it. And so uh, the idea of punishment or reward is valuable for things that people were, quote, aware of. But there are hundreds of kinds of awareness. There's uh, remembering something as an image. There's remembering something as a string of words. There's remembering the, the tactile feeling of something. And uh, most of the time, you don't remember those things. Sometimes you have made a representation and storing it. And we use the word conscious for, for dozens of different mental activities. And that's what you mean by suitcase, because you take all these dozens of mental activities and try to stuff them in this one, this one place. Right. And <laughs> there's no harm in that for social purposes, yeah. because it's very good. Uh, when, when a word has multiple meanings, that ambiguity is often very valuable. But if you're trying to understand those processes, and you put them all in one box, then you say, where in the brain is consciousness located? There's a whole society <laughs> of scientists who are trying to find <laughs> the, the place in the brain where consciousness is. But if it's a suitcase and it's just a word for many different processes, they're wasting their time. And they should try to find out how all those processes, each of them work and how they're related. You've talked about a dozen, some, as many as 20 different major processes that are part of this what we call consciousness. What, what are some examples of those higher categories of things which we, we uh, uh, sometimes uh, uh, um, mask by this word consciousness? Well, for example, if there is a sequence of events that happened and you can talk about them, then what you've done is you've taken these very complicated processes and images and uh, so forth and you've represented them symbolically using these little things called words. Mm -hmm. And uh, for example, the verb is a word that describes 
the difference between two situations. If John gave Mary the book, mm -hmm. gave means first John had the book and then Mary had the book. So the single word describes a transformation of representations of two different situations. Now it would be nice to know what brain structures uh, are used to represent this, the meaning of a word like give or take or hit or so forth. And I call these transframes in my book, but uh, I haven't met a, a neuroscientist who says, gee, that's really important. Where are the transframes? And so I have a, there's a big gulf between the kinds of theories I'm making, which are more like those of William James and Freud, except that they're using modern computer science ideas about complicated processes, which those old timers didn't have. And the neuroscientists who are trying to see how, how, could, a, how could a bunch of synapses and nerve cells have a goal? Well, there's something in, in between. And I, have, I don't think I've ever met a neuroscientist who has a good mechanical idea of what a machine would have to have in order to have a goal. And uh, there is a nice theory of that that we don't have time for here. Let, let's talk about the nature of self. I feel like I'm a unity, that I am a self. And uh, I am conscious, and I have different aspects of me that at one point or another I, I'm more aware of than others. But at all times, whatever I'm aware of, uh, 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 my glasses on my face, talking to you now, I'm focusing on, but at all times, I have the same self, same sense of self-unity. Where does that come from? The idea of self is a wonderful and ancient idea, and uh, it reminds me of the story of somebody who has a knife, uh, but they lost the blade once, and they lost the handle another time, <laughs> and they replaced them, and it's still the same knife, but of course it's not. And it seems to me that this idea of self comes from, it's almost a verbal mistake. It comes from the naive idea that, that a person is two things, a body and a mind. Mm -hmm. And we know that the body changes. <coughs> we don't, but once we just divide into two parts, then it's easy to say, what's a self? It's a body and a mind, and you don't break those up. But what happens? Are you the same person you were five minutes ago? Of course not. You're mostly the same. Are you the same person you were when you were three years old? Well, no, that's very much like the <coughs> knife and, mm -hmm. uh, and handle that have been replaced. Here's what I think there really is. Each person, and I don't think most animals do, maybe the primates are also able to do this, we build in our brain a model of what we are. And the simplest model is a body and a mind. Mm -hmm. And a more complicated model is the body is split into lots of parts. There's a torso and limbs and a head. And in the head, an educated person knows there's a face and the sensory eyes and ears, and there's a brain. And they know that the brain has 400 modules which do different things called cognitive processes. And uh, but we don't have just that model. The beautiful thing about the idea of self in each person is that we have dozens of them. I have a model, you have a model, of yourself as a member of a family, as a member of a profession. You're a neuroscientist. You're a TV uh, <laughs> producer, everything. And these are each different. You're a man. You're a, uh, an American. And for each of these, you have a different structure. Uh, each of those is very complicated, but when you look at it from the outside, you don't see all that stuff, and you say, oh, that's myself. But when I look at it from the inside, I feel all those things you said are true, but I still feel a sense of, 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 of undivided unity. Well, I think the sense of undivided unity comes because the first model you made is that I have a body and a mind. You got that when you were one year old or two, and that's still there as sort of the index of the others. But uh, it's not very useful, except socially. Uh, if, you give, if you loan somebody a book, you expect to get that book from the same person. So for all everyday purposes, the idea of self is very important and very wonderful. From a cognitive point of view, right. uh, it's a very stupid idea. <laughs> and it's an obstacle to understanding how our minds work. 